Hi, I'm uh, Pastor Lee, and uh, last week uh, I didn't put a video out. As you probably know, if you've been watching me the last few weeks, I do put a video out, video out each and every week showing about the uh, headlines, what's going around the world, and how they fit into the Bible. <clears throat> but this uh, past week I purposely held off doing the video because I didn't want to speak too soon. I wanted to just sit back, watch, and see what would come from the Pope's visit. Well, I did that. Well, I want to say that all involved in the Pope's visit were very, very successful in what they were planning on doing. As you know, the main reason for him coming here to this country specifically New York City, to the UN building. It was a very important meeting. Well, one thing they wanted to accomplish was to begin to put together what the Bible predicted, and that is in the last days in which you and I are living, we will see the making of the one world religion. The Pope was successful in uniting millions of people, and you saw them as he's going down the street, just thousands of people, and the viewers on the television. They flocked to him. They were praising him. They were worshiping him. And that's exactly what his intentions do, is to bring people and their own religious faiths, their own beliefs, under one tent. All of them aren't going to have their each individual separate tents anymore. It's all going to come under one. And my personal belief has been for a while now that the foundation of this one world religion you may agree, disagree, but this is just my feelings. And I said, I've been feeling this way for quite a few years now. I think I'm beginning to see that maybe I was right. Is that the foundation, when you build a home or build a building, you always put it on a solid foundation. Well, I believe the foundation of this one world religion is first Catholicism. And then on top of that, joining Catholicism is Islam. And eventually, all the others, you have Hinduism, Satanism, New Age, on and on. You have all the others to eventually join the main foundation. And this is what uh, the Bible speaks of as the mother whore. The mother whore, the woman that rides the beast, the woman that rides the beast is the one world religion. That is... Catholicism, mainly, with Islam joined in. No, it's not Chrislam, because at this time, when the tribulation begins, all the Christians will have been yanked off the earth and what we know as a rapture. But the Bible calls for the mother whore, it calls for all the other harlots to come back to mother. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing all these individual religions, different faiths, all joining into one. They're uniting into one. And uh, it's just amazing that we're living in this day and time to see this actually happening. And I've seen a few commercials, not whether you've seen it, but I'll share this. I think I've seen it only on Fox uh, News Channel, but maybe it's been on others, I don't know. But it's advertisement for the Catholic Church. And specifically, they say, come back to the Catholic Church. Come back to the Catholic Church. Well, that means it's all these other religions. And if you look at each one, there is a root of Catholicism in there. Sometimes it may not be much, but there is some Catholicism. There is resemblance. It's because they all came from the same mother. Catholicism. And we know that Revelation speaks of the people who are not accepting the mark of the beast. 
They will not worship the beast, will not take the mark. They are beheaded. That is Islam. That is what the Islamic punishment is, is beheading. So, must I go on with this subject? I think we see it all happening right now. And, oh, well, I'm talking about this, the United Nations. I don't think people stop and think the United Nations. They just say the term. Do they really know what that means? United is what? To bring together nations. Bring together all nations into one. One world government, one world religion, and of course to go along with that is what is going to be as the one world currency. Now the second thing that was accomplished with this Pope's visit was while the media was being dis was distracting millions by following the Pope from place to place with multiple cameras with him, he attended this conference at the UN. But then it's like it's funny that the media failed to report on this meeting. Yeah, they show him coming into the UN building, sitting down, posing with the president of the UN, speaking a few few words, but then they cut away and you didn't see the Pope anymore for a while. No, the media, they didn't fail to report on it. No, they were successful and what they were trying to do is to bring all the hype. The Pope helped lead this conference with most of the world's leaders willingly signing the 2030 Agenda. I've said in my previous broadcast what this is. If this is to put together the one world government and the key to starting this, the linchpin is this made-up climate change. So there you go. The entire visit of the Pope boils down to this, to bring on the one world government, one world religion. And you know what the really sad part about this, people? The sad part is that the majority of the people have no idea. They're clueless. They're being deceived. And how? By being distracted. What does the Bible say? Do not be deceived and do not be destroyed by the lack of knowledge. Moving on. As you've been seeing on TV, Russia has now carried out its first airstrikes in Syria. Since I've written this uh, a day or two ago, I think I heard this morning they're up to 20 strikes. But Russia has sent now more than two dozen fighter aircraft, attacked helicopters, surface to air missile defense system, and hundreds of troops to its only naval facility outside of the former Soviet Union in the Syrian port of Tardis. Now Russia is claiming to be only attacking ISIS. Of course we know that ISIS was, was formed and was um, trained and funded by the United States, CIA. Of course, we're attacking our own creation, and supposedly Russia is joining in with us to go after ISIS. Well, that's not the case. The case is, according to French defense minister, he claims that Russia is striking the western part of Syria, where there are no ISIS militants and instead are hitting an area primarily held by anti-Assad rebels, as I said, who are backed by the CIA. If you don't think I'm telling the truth, look it up and find out for yourself. The scenarios for this crisis to spiral out of control are numerous, and many Bible prophecy experts, including myself, not saying that I'm an expert, but I am one that's been following things on an hour-to-hour -hour basis, we believe this could be setting the stage for two important prophecies that are found in the Bible. Of course, I'm referring to Isaiah 17 and Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38 is the war of Gog and Magog, where Russia returns to the Middle East. Russia has returned to the Middle East after a 30-year absence and they're positioning its troops ever closer to Israel. 
the mountains of Israel. That's exactly what Ezekiel 38 says. Read that for yourself. Russia and Iran will join forces and they it will attack or attempt to attack Israel on the mountains. So here we get, we see this. And NORAD, NORAD is moving communication gears into underground bunkers to protect against an EMP attack. The Pentagon has recently announced it will be moving sensitive and important communications equipment to nuclear-hardened Cold War facilities to protect against EMP events that could occur, whether naturally from sunbursts or from overhead detonations of a nuclear weapon. These facilities are located at the Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado. And this is done at the cost of, get this, $700 million. My personal belief is that I don't believe this is being done unless they didn't already know that something is about to happen. I don't think they'd go through all this trouble and spend $700, maybe plus million dollars for something that might happen. I think they do know it's going to happen. And North Carolina has joined the, the growing crowd. North Carolina is now among the growing number of states terrorizing young students and parents with vaccine violence threatening to deny them their education by removing kids from the school if they are not vaccinated. Now, where is our freedom? Where is the freedom of making a choice of whether I decide my child receives a vaccination or not? If another child over here has a vaccination, that, per that parent doesn't need to be concerned because if this person wasn't and their child is vaccinated, well, if the vaccination works, then they're not going to be contaminated. You know, our freedom is taken away little by little by little, one step at a time, for our security, for our safety, for our own good. That's a bunch of garbage. That's a bunch of malarkey. That's deception. That's being deceived. Of course, that's what the bubbleheads on TV news are telling you. For your safety and your protection, this is being done. Fox News contributor Paul McGuire says, quote, The only thing they're lacking right now is a sufficient crisis big enough to win enthusiastic public support in America and other nations in the world for full-on global governance. My personal fear or my personal concern is that's exactly what they're going to do. They are going to create their own crisis. What's the, the old saying now, becoming older and older? Don't let a good crisis go to waste. Even if they don't have a crisis, they'll, they'll make one up. Bingo, false flag. Exactly. They will create their own crisis to match what they need to have happen. In my personal belief, this last shooting, as terrible as it is, Terrible in Oregon, I believe it is a false flag. No, it's not a false flag that, that the people were killed. That's true. But the reason behind it, the explanation behind it, I think was to get our eyes off of what's going over in the Middle East and with Russia and what Obama is saying in the speeches. They had to have something to distract, there's a word again, to distract us, take our eyes off of it. Let's put us over there. It's the same scenario. Each and every one of these shootings is the same thing again and again and again. That just shows you and I something, that Satan pretty much uses the same thing over and over again. The same gimmick. And why shouldn't he? Because it works every single time because people fall for it. They believe it. Well, I think I've said enough for this week. I've wrapped it up. I just want to take a second to say, hi there, Jonah. And I want to say, keep on speaking, keep on standing on the truth. I think you know what I mean, Jonah. Just keep doing what you're doing there, buddy. 
love with you all my heart. Well, everybody, thank you for joining me this week. Keep watching. Keep your head and your eyes in the Bible and would watch prophecy being fulfilled. I'm Pastor Lee for Walking Through the Latter Days. You have a great day and may God bless.